Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Lloyd's Metals and Energy Limited Q4 FY24 earnings conference call hosted by Equilis Securities. As a reminder, all participant clients will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Siddharth Gadekar from Equilist Securities. Thank you and over to you, sir. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. We at Equilist are pleased to host Lloyd's OQFI24 results conference call. We have with us today Mr. Rajesh Gupta, Managing Director, Mr. Ziyar Sheikh, the CFO. Uh, now I would like to invite Mr. Rajesh Gupta to initiate the proceedings for the result call. Uh, thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone, and good evening, Siddharth, and congratulations to you. Uh, thank you for joining us all for uh, to, uh, for our uh, FY24 results conference call. I trust this message finds you well. I hope each one of you has had the opportunity to thoroughly, thoroughly, review, <coughs> thoroughly review the detailed earnings release we had shared on the exchange and on our the official website. The results today uh, that we are presenting today mark a significant milestone in our company's journey. We have uh, achieved a top line of, uh, of 6,000 crore rupees mark uh, in revenue for this year. This achievement underscores the robust performance and growth we have experienced across all segments, namely sponge, iron ore and power. FI24 has been pivotal for us uh, with such milestones as surpassing uh, 1,000 crores in profit after tax, achieving disparities of 10 billion tons. Uh, looking ahead, our ro road map to 55 million tons is going to be one of its kind in the Indian iron space. We shall be single location mine operating at this scale. In terms of operation, a uh, spawn segment has recorded its best yearly uh, production as a result of the new concerning plan, whereas the uh, uh, animal segment continues its strong performance and also produced 10 million tons, also a record. Additionally, our power segment has uh, uh, witnessed a satisfied traction. In FY24, we set forth a comprehensive roadmap uh, that charts our course for the future. Our direction is crystal clear and our execution team is fully dedicated to realizing our goals. We have spe specific timelines uh, looking at various issues and are dil diligently working towards them. Just to recreate, let me again give a brief, a brief uh, snapshot to provide you with a glimpse of our plans. We are moving uh, towards forward integration in our operation to become a value added steel maker with a 4.2 million ton steel capacity total. This includes a good mix of 3 million ton flat products and 1.2 million ton of uh, long product. Expanding our iron ore production is set into our plans with beneficiation playing a crucial role. Furthermore, addressing logistics in steel making is vital and we plan to do so through two slurry pipelines to both our plants from the mine. This not only reduces freight cost but also aligns with our commitment to environmental stability. We believe that establishing such capacity without resorting to debt will be a very big differentiating factor for us. I will now hand over to Mr. Riyaz Sheikh, our CFO, who will provide more details on our headline numbers and elaborate on our capital expenditure also. Over to you, Riyaz. Thank you, Raji. Good evening, esteemed participants. Firstly, I thank all of all for taking the time for attend to attend the, uh, the company's earning quarter four and FY24 con call, and also thank the Equitas team for hosting the con call. So to begin with today, I'm delighted to share with you our operational performance for quarter four FY24. I will then provide an overview of our full year FY24 results and updates on our capital expenditure and dividend declaration. Starting with quarter 4 FY24, our revenue witnessed an impressive growth of 74% year-on-year, primarily driven by higher volumes in our sponge and iron ore segments. Our EBITDA also mirrored this robust performance, increasing by 153% year-on-year 
in quarter 4 FY24 with both iron ore and spawn segments contributing significantly. Moving on to the full year FY24 results, we continue to experience strong growth with revenue soaring by 90% year on year, predominantly led by increased volumes in our iron ore segment. Similarly, our EBITDA for FY24 witnessed a substantial growth of 101% year on year, once again with the iron ore and spawn segments playing pivotal roles. Now on the operational front, our iron ore production stood at a commendable 10 million tons while our DRI segments saw production of 2,60,000 tons. Additionally, our power division achieves sales of 188 million units during the quarter, during the year. On a, on a per ton basis, our EBITDA for RNO stood at INR 2,375 and quarter four, uh, for quarter four and INR 1,710 for the full year. Now regarding a capital expenditure, in FY24 we invested INR around 1700 crores. We are pleased to inform you that we have been efficiently executing our CAPEX plan. The 85 kilometer slurry pipeline project is already 50% complete and our DRI and pellet projects are progressing at a breathtaking speed. We anticipate both projects to be completed by FY25. Moving on to our balance sheet, I am proud to announce that our company remains gross debt free and we envision it to remain so even after executing a capex of INR 33,000 crores. Delving deeper into our returns, you will find that our ROC, ROC remains north of 50%. However, if we adjust the CWIP numbers, our ROC exceeds 100%. This indicates that our capex projects are strategically placed to be ROIC accredited. Uh, we have declared a dividend this year of um, uh, 100%, that is uh, on the pay of 1 rupee per share, that is how it's 100%. Looking ahead, we are optimistic that a company will achieve major milestones in the coming years. Now I'll open the floor for any questions you may have. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking questions. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. To ask questions, please press star and one. The first question is from the line of Nikun Lahoti, who's an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello, uh, congratulations sir on your result. Uh, sir, my question is, hello. Yes, yes, please go ahead. Uh, uh, sir, my question is, uh, you mentioned uh, in a video like in four to five years, you expect the revenue to be uh, after steel plant coming and full expansion capacity of 25 million ton. Uh, revenue of 35,000 to 40,000 crores. So what could be like revenue breakup between iron ore and steel? So, uh, can you, like can you start part of the question? What? What, what is the breakup of iron ore versus steel? Yeah, in future, like uh, of revenue, what could it be expected? So, so uh, across pages, uh, the figure that you're mentioning probably was given in one of my interviews. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, it's a simple calculation of you know the current uh, rate uh, uh, of steel and iron ore. Uh, approximately, our iron ore sales at that point of time will be around uh, six million tons. No, sorry, nine million tons. At the uh, after our whole capex plan is over, and uh, steel uh, pellet will be around six million tons. And uh, semis, for other semis will be around half a million ton, and mm -hmm. steel will be around 4.2 million tons. So, if you total all of that, come to uh, 40,000 crores, or probably a little more than that, uh, mm -hmm. the percentage of revenue I would leave for you to calculate. Okay, 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 fine. And, sir, uh, one more question. Like, uh, there was a report released from Ventura Securities about this stock and if in that report it was written like uh, there is uh, there might be one more 
हेलो वी लॉस्ट यू हेलो वी सीम टू हैव लॉस्ट द लाइन फॉर मिस्टर so yeah we move to the next question the next question is from the line of nishan bagrecha from incred equities please go ahead yeah hello i'm audible yeah yes yeah uh, thank you for the opportunity and many congratulations on the robust number sir so uh, so my i have couple of questions so firstly so when do we expect to receive all the clearance to expand our mine to around 55 million ton that is my first question uh we expect this to uh, in various phases there are uh, approvals such as the ibm uh, plan approval and ultimately the ec uh we expect all that to happen by the year end 2024-25 okay okay and uh, sir secondly so just wanted to check on the uh, volume outlook so how should we look at the volumes in fy25 assuming we receive ec by the end of uh, uh, calendar year 24 and so can we see 15 to 16 uh, million tons volumes in fy25 and then 25 million tons in 26 we are as uh, mr gupta just mentioned we are expecting the um, the clearance uh, by the year end that is mostly in the last quarter of the year end so we are uh, as such projecting of around 12 to 13 million tons in this year uh 10 million is for sure and if we if the, if the approvals are in place uh, which we are expecting so pro rata accordingly we should be getting around 3 and 3 3 to 4 million additional so around the uh, 13 13 million is what we are expecting to be doing in this uh, financial year okay uh yeah so i have uh, one more question so uh, we have taken an enabling resolution for uh, for the qyp so when do we expect to complete the process and again Uh, how much are promoters going to infuse? So, any color on that? The, the process of the same is on. As you said, we've just got the clearance uh, the, uh, the last weekend uh, from the uh, shareholders. Uh, the process is on, and then we should be once everything is crystallized, we should be coming back to you. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you. We also hope that the uh, we also planning that the uh, uh, dilution by the promoters will not be too. Uh, very large exchange there will be some dilution but not to the full extent the promoters would be investing something the plans are not yet frozen okay and sir one last one uh, a, a bookkeeping question like how much incentives are we likely to receive each year starting from fy25 to fy29 and uh, how would the incentive structure look beyond uh, beyond fy29 incentives yeah uh from the state government yeah so So these incentives are on capital basis, and capital actually when we start the processes. So by that time we will have uh, FY25, which is current year. We would not have much of the plants operational. They will all start operating in the last quarter, uh, as predicted. So there would not be any major incentives uh, apart from what is balanced from previous uh, periods. We don't be anticipating to receive much uh, incentives. For FY25, post that uh, the uh, figures are uh, going to be approximately uh, one, uh, based on again the turnover, etc., and various rules. Uh, the the cap that we have got is 150 percent of the uh, uh, capex for one of the uh, plants and the 110 for the other plant, and. At the end of the period, uh, say 2030, 31, it will be 2000 to uh, 500 crore uh, approximate. So it's, it's going to be a phased manner of incentives. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, yeah. Sure. Thank you. That was all for my question. Thank you. Before we take the next question, a reminder to participants that you may press star and one to join the question queue. <laughs> the next question is from the line of Parthiv Shah from Tracom. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, sir, for taking my question and congratulations for robust set of numbers. Sir, I just had a query on one of your slides, slide number nineteen, where you mentioned the year-wise iron ore output. 
and it mentions that first full year post all approvals year 1 25 million tons mine bso and then subsequently year 2 year 3 year 4 onwards you have the bht element so sir uh, just want to understand when we talk of a critical mining capacity of 55 million tons uh, is that like you know totally sellable iron ore output or out of that in the bht share you know not all will be sellable how do so at the at the peak our at the peak our uh, iron ore uh, mining would be 55 million tons with 10 million tons of bso and 45 million tons of uh, bhq the bhq would be beneficiary down to 15 million tons so 10 plus 20 15 25 million tons would be the usable or sellable ore that we have at the end of the period uh, this will be uh, the, the beneficiation will be done through three plants which will be done um, you know with the processes are on right now to uh, put up these plants the investments and the uh, planning and the testing etc has started and the pilot plant is on so that the, the first beneficiation plant we hope to have in 28 uh, 27 28 okay and so in terms of ramping up the ore capacity so you mentioned the fs25 probably you are looking at uh, 12 to 14 million tons right uh, yeah. so then uh, fs26 27 28 any such road map you can give that you know till the bhq thing is up and running and uh, proven so, you know what must be the plan 25 million tons ec is approved and received hmm. it would be uh, producing 25 million tons of uh, usable usable ore on that time uh, based on the depending on the uh, beneficiation that uh, the usable ore would have a mix of direct sales ore as well as beneficiated ore which i just explained which is there in the slide that you're talking about okay so uh, also uh, regarding uh, you know the uh, current time so you are, are you i am giving you are selling the current fines in the market right now or maybe you are uh, providing to some pilot players till your pilot plan comes so we are selling all of our fines to pilot or uh, center uh, center plant uh, users uh, for, uh, that includes uh, pilot plant i mean that that's that's what fine they use so we don't have our own pilot plant as of now that will happen next year where we will use some of the pilots is that Did I answer your question, or did I miss some nuance of the question? Yeah, sir. Just thank you, Anupam. You have some uh, trading agreement with some pellet producer. Ah, okay. So we we do have uh, uh, agreement to sell uh, all uh, Mandovi MRP PL is a company in Goa, which is one of the oldest pellet plants in India in the world, in fact. And we all iron ore is being sold, uh, uh, being purchased. from him by uh, by us uh, so by uh, from us rather so all his uh, ore uh, consumed uh, from our uh, mine that gives him stability of ore uh, all the exports and some quantities are being purchased by us back this is giving us two three advantages one is uh, it ties up a little uh, small chunk of our iron ore sales number two it also gives us experience to do uh, Uh, pellet uh, seed marketing. We have established a brand called El Mel Pell, uh, and uh, we hope to be selling uh, that uh, high-end uh, uh, pellets uh, used for uh, gas-based DRA, which is called DR pellets, to the uh, MENA market particularly over the next uh, over this year. So, just for my simplistic understanding, your quality of pellets, uh, pellets. How close will it be to uh, Wale pellets? Wale pellets. Uh, so uh, there are two stages to this answer. Uh, right now we are not beneficiating our ore. We are, you know, uh, just grinding it and using it. We have very small quantity of 66% uh, Fe material, which we are using to make these pellets in MRPPL, around 1.5 million. What maximum we can sell, whatever it, uh, we require for. export we are giving that to him that's number one uh once our uh, and so the pellets are uh, the quality that uh, mrpl is making is uh nearly equal to that uh, of wale uh i would say in a range from uh, 0 to 100 it would be in the range of 85 to 90 is how near we are to wale 
when we go to uh, our own pellet plant, uh, same you know, arise till our beneficiation plant starts. Once the beneficiation plant starts, our ore will get upgraded to around 66-67%. And at that point of time, our uh, pellets that we make in that plant, in our own plant or in any other plant, uh, in, in our plant or, or in MRP plant would be equal to Vale uh, quality. Sorry. Yes, sir. Uh, obtain a similar kind of premium. Vale, like you know, uses 100% beneficiary ore only. Okay. Yeah. So we are uh, able to achieve that quality without beneficiary, which is a rarity in itself in today's Arena scenario. That is one. Now, sir, you are also mentioning the PPT. Uh... Go ahead. Yes, sir. Sorry. Uh, you mentioned in your PPT that uh, along with IMR, you also have coal. Now, uh, am I assuming correct? You don't have any coal mine right now, right? So your coal sourcing will come from where and how will you manage the cost of coal? So coal we are bu buying uh, for our DRI plant either in, uh, through uh, auction route by, from WCL or importing it. And later on, we start our blast This is the co uh, coking coal will be imported. Okay. You, you have any plans to uh, bid for any uh, coal mines in the country? Uh, we haven't bid for any co coal mine at the moment. Okay. And so, just lastly, regarding your value-added steel and you know talks of the 4.2 million tons per annum steel plant, flats and long involved. Uh, just to understand, you will have better grip on your numbers because of your current backward integra integration nature, the type of quality of the ore that you have, and your future plans and everything. So, uh, you know, if, if currently, say, Tata Steel domestic, you know, EBITDA by ton is like the benchmark in terms of uh, they can deliver in a good cycle, even a 20,000 rupees EBITDA by ton, uh, what are you expecting? You know, what sort of EBITDA by ton in a good cycle you uh, your plan will be able to deliver? So we would, uh, be, uh, you very correctly mentioned about our cost control, uh, uh, with, especially without our, uh, any premium. So our mines will fetch no premiums uh, till 2057, uh, which is a big differentiator from every other steel maker in the country today except, except one. Uh, apart from that, we are not going to have, uh, so we are, one or two players will only be left with no premium Mines in 2032, 31-32. Uh, that will further add to our competitiveness with compared to every other steel maker. Uh, uh, our uh, iron ore is uh, well stabilized. Uh, we have done good surveys and good uh, resource calculations and uh, uh, exploration, and we are confident that the qualities are what we I just mentioned, especially after beneficiation. Uh, our uh, for the 4.2 million tons around. Uh, Approximately eight, uh, approximately 15 million tons of pipe, pipeline route will be used. So though the, uh, the plants are not at the pithead, uh, for all practical purposes, uh, the cost of transportation of iron ore is as good as that because of the pipeline route. And of course, it also makes it greener. Again, with the beneficiary ore, our uh, iron ore will be uh, very high quality, lesser coke, also greener. Uh, apart from this is our IPS route. Uh, Maharashtra is one state uh, which gives a very robust uh, 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 investment uh, incentive. Our average incentive between the two plants is around 125%, which is the cap uh, over 12 years. So approximately, like I mentioned earlier, 2000 to 2500 crore is coming, flowing back to us once that peak uh, flow happens. So with all of this, we believe that uh, on the cost front, we should be amongst the most competitive players, not only in India, but in the world. Of course, only time can tell, but uh, we are very confident of our numbers. Uh, regarding EBITDA, uh, steel is a cyclical business. Yeah, uh, in March, between March and April, the price has gone up by 2,500 to 3,000 rupees. Why? Difficult to answer. So it's a cyclical business. I cannot answer about what be the EBITDA numbers uh, uh, per se, but of course, with us, EBITDA and uh, profit after tax will remain. Uh, profit before tax will be the same number. But we believe that with, because of all this, the EBITDA numbers will always be stronger than 
every other steel company in india okay and that uh one more point regarding the choking of the current infrastructure as i understand with only 10 million tons of iron ore mining uh, all the connecting roads and whatever rail infrastructure highly choked up so now we are talking of ramping up our ore mining uh, how how supportive has the government been in terms of giving you uh, both the road and the rail infrastructure or you are looking to develop the roads on your own uh, what is the uh, like what process in that because i hear from every uh, mining company that you know mining output is not an issue but the logistics is a nightmare in our country so how how you tackling that challenge so i always say one thing my friend that uh, steel is more of a logistic game than steel itself uh for logistics out of the mine we are developing our mines to the extent of uh, uh you know every year we are spending up to 100 150 crore rupees to develop the roads and maintain the roads at our end outside the mine also up to the uh, stockyard and up to the railway siding this has ensured that we have been able to ramp up from half a million ton dispatch in 21 22 to uh, 23 24 that is the two and a half years to 10 million tons uh our monthly averages have gone up to on a run rate of around uh, 18 to 20 million tons also in some of these months okay uh in january we had in march we produced very less iron ore because of the reaching the capacity of 10 million tons so uh, i do not think that at to achieve 10 million tons we were ever choked up to use your word uh railway facilities from the three sidings that we are using right now is uh, quite adequate uh, to all parts of the country we are also over a period developed uh, a lot of road network outside the state also so we are sending our material from uh, the mine area to raigarh raipur even odisha now in some cases to west bengal in some cases by road taking advantage of incoming coal that comes in for various reasons or other input that comes in from the port so we are uh, continuously on the watch out for uh, looking at best logistic practices and it's a very very important part of our business uh, i think that thank you very much sir questions very fine yes sir absolutely thank you very much answers all my questions all the best sir thank you thank you the next question is from the line of ritwik shet from one up financial please go ahead yeah hi uh, good evening sir uh, sir just two questions from my end uh, so uh, what is the capacity of the slurry pipeline when it will be completely uh, be commissioned so we have two pipelines planned one is the pipeline from the mine or hedri to our konseri plant both in both being in the district of gadchiroli that's a 85 km pipeline with a 10 uh, 10 million ton capacity uh, that pipeline has two grinding units 5 million ton each the first one will be commissioned in december january and the second grinding unit will be uh, commissioned uh, next year both these grinding units are in sync with the pellet plant uh, so at the end of that period uh, uh, we would be uh, transporting 10 million tons on this pipeline 85 km the other pipeline that we have planned is a 5 kilo, uh, 5 million ton pipeline from uh, uh hedri again to our google uh, plant this is in chandrapur this length of this pipeline is 185 kilometers uh, the survey of this uh, pipeline has started uh, and you know we uh, we are applying for permissions as we speak and uh, that is a little bit further down the line maybe by uh, march 28 29 i'm getting correct March 28 is when that plant would be, uh, when that pipeline would be ready. Uh, again, linked with the pellet plant in that plant, okay. uh, in that location. Okay. So, uh, total 15 million tons will be transported by pipeline out of the 25 million tons saleable product that we'll be doing, okay. leaving a 10 million tons uh, to be transported by other means. Uh, which is equal to what we are doing right now. So, in the long run, we are very confident of achieving our logistic needs. Got it. Got it. And and what would be the approximate logistic cost saving when uh, both these pipelines will be commissioned? So, in the first plant, around 700 to 800 rupees. In the second plant, around uh, 1100 to 1200 rupees. Okay. Got it. Okay. And uh, so, my next question is uh, regarding the capex that we are undergoing. 
uh, can you uh, tell us what is the pending capex uh, for all the expansion projects and when are these uh, projects expected to be completed it's a very long uh, drawn out question a uh, long drawn out answer because the capex plan is very very extensive let me go location wise the total cap capex plan that we have is around 33000 crore rupees uh the first location that i'll talk about is chandrapur which is our first plan uh there we are uh, in the first phase we are doing uh, uh two bri units two into 500 bri units and a two into 30 megawatts uh, power plant the power plant is mostly from waste product uh this should be ready by march 25 in the same location uh, one and a half is down the line we will go in for a steel plant a steel plant will enrich us uh, one blast furnace two arc furnaces uh, casters ladle furnaces and two rolling mills to produce 1.2 million tons of wire rod mill a uh, wire rod product uh, the total plant expansion in this is around 6300 crore rupees in both the, these phases put together the third phase to this plant uh which is the pellet plant that we just talked about earlier with a pipeline uh that pellet plant is 4 million tons that 4 million ton would be utilized 2 million tons for the steel plant in this location and 2 million to sell to other steel plants next door to us uh so even the pellet plant and the pipeline they will become more viable and all this put together is 6300 crore rupees uh 6400 crore rupees and uh, that's location number 1 Location number two is uh, Konsari, which is in the district of uh, Gadchiroli. In that location, we have started a, a, a BRI unit, two, two into hundred, two into ninety-five ton BRI unit, uh, in a period of around thirteen months after we got the uh, uh, EC clearance for that. Uh, subsequently, now we are constructing the first pellet plant. The, the long-term plan of this is. a uh, 2 into 4 million ton uh, pellet plant uh, a blast furnace based uh, blast furnace bof uh, based uh, uh, long long uh, sorry flat product mill and downstream for uh, making uh, hot rolled galvanized coils and uh, cold rolled galvanized coils um, the two pellet plants out of the two pellet plants we already have uh, one pellet plant under construction along with the pipeline uh that should be ready again by march 25 what i mentioned earlier uh, similar to the uh, dri unit and uh, the second pellet plant will be ready one year after that uh, by june 26 and the seed plant uh, target is by september 2 uh, 28 to march 29 um that's uh, the total investment in this uh, uh, location along with the slurry pipeline that i earlier mentioned is around 21000 crore rupees uh the permission for this uh, steel plant is yet to be applied all of the permissions are with us the third location is our mine sorry and sir, just to uh, interrupt uh, the blast furnace uh, flat product is the 3 million ton uh, right yeah. yeah yeah okay uh the third uh, uh, location is the mine where we right now we're mining 10 million tons we will upgrade that to uh, 55 million tons like i mentioned earlier at an investment cost of around 800 crore rupees uh this investment includes uh, basically the basic infrastructure and uh, like i said road etc everything uh apart from that we have a plant next to this which is already being uh, constructed as we speak for the grinding unit of the uh, pipelines but apart from those grinding unit of the pipeline we will be uh, putting up three beneficiation plants with a throughput of 15 million tons each and an output of 5 million tons each uh that is around a 5000 crore rupees investment so total investment with put all put together is around 33000 crore rupees okay okay so uh, thank you for your answer all the questions are answered and against that what mr riya said we have spent 1650 crore rupees in the last uh, 1700 crores in the last uh, two years last two years uh and right now uh, the plant Uh, the expansion plans are very very on in full swing and uh, yeah okay okay sir uh, uh sir this is very helpful uh, thank you and all the best sir thank, thank you sir thank you
next question is from Abbas Punchanani from Incredit Queries. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, sir, for taking my question. So, I have a couple of questions regarding the ore. So, what will be the royalty rates for the low grade ore? Hello, can you be a bit louder? Okay, just hold on. Yeah. Is it better, sir? Yes, yes. yes. So, I have a couple of questions regarding the ore. So, what will be the royalty rates for low grade ore? Royalty for low grade. So, when we're talking about low grade ore, you're talking about the BHQ? Yes. Okay, currently the BHQ, uh, the uh, India, Indian uh, IBM rules uh, give uh, higher uh, grade up to 45%. This is 35%. So, if I take a pro rate around 45 to 35, the uh, royalty will be around 45 rupees a ton for that one. Okay, so what would be the approximately cost uh, for mining? The mining cost, including uh, this royalty, the uh, uh, the uh, mining cost itself and the uh, beneficiation cost would be in the same range that we have right now, uh, which is around uh, 2,500 rupees. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That's it from my side. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Amin Kumar, who is an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello. Yes, yeah, yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, yeah they will. Uh, uh, very nice to see the presentation from you, sir. Uh, having said that particular thing, I think I see a lot of dynamism in the organization. For example, in the last uh, PPT, we saw only one pipeline of 89 kilometers. Now we see another uh, a pipeline that is coming up on that. Oh, that pipeline will so, be under construction. Ah, okay, in the uh, quarter on quarter. Yeah, quarter on quarter. Thank okay. you. Yes, sir. We 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 are very yeah. live to the occasion. <laughs> so that's very good, sir. So there is a lot of dynamism that is coming on that one, and education is going on very well. So the first question related to uh, the uh, related is that uh, what would be the savings uh, with uh, current uh, DRA plant uh, operations wise by when this pipeline is complete? Uh, so like you said, we uh, we be saving on thirteen hundred rupees a ton. Uh -huh. uh, we use one point eight metric ton per ton of iron, uh, metric ton of iron ore. So one point eight into eleven hundred is. 3,500 rupees. Okay. It's approximately 10% is what you're going to get more uh, efficient with respect to... Uh, yeah, logistics is always a very, very big cost in our business. Correct, sir. Okay. The second question is that when we recently completed one DRA plant, uh, I think few quarters back, uh, are we getting any incentive from the Maharashtra government on that one or there is no incentive for that? The incentives are due, we are not yet claiming it for some strategic reasons. The incentives are due or we are not claiming it. Okay, so that is also covered under that one. Now, are we going to get incentives for this slurry pipe or we are not going to get incentives for this slurry pipe investment? Yes. All our capital. We are going to get incentives. applicable for incentives. We are going to get that one. Uh, the second one uh, question, sir. Previously, you were talking about uh, power uh, plant uh, expansion. Uh, if you really look at your previous uh, presentation, spoke about uh, expanding the power generation to only 90 megawatt more or something like that. So uh, our, uh, our total, I'm sorry, my uh, spiel on uh, investment, I missed out on power. My apologies. Uh, all the uh, plants, the power plants will be captive. Uh, in uh, the uh, first location, it will be around uh, 150 megawatt, and the other location will be around 300 megawatt. Uh, Hadri will not be captive, that will be buying power from outside. Okay. Uh, but, sir, uh, is it right to uh, go for the. It is going to be coal based power generation, right, sir? Sorry? It would be coal based power generation, right? Yeah, I was just coming to that. Out of 450 megawatt, around 300 megawatts we envisage to be the, the uh, to be waste heat recovery or waste coal recovery, mm -hmm. uh, waste products recovery basically, and around 150 megawatt would be uh, coal based, uh, direct coal based uh, thermal power. Sir, uh, is there any thought about uh, using the solar uh, power for uh, generating and using locally? 
Uh, just like uh, Godavari Power had done that particular thing substantially in the recent past, and they saved a lot of money on that. The plans are not yet uh, frozen. We are looking at uh, uh, investing in, uh, you know, through the captive uh, route that are available in the market. We are looking at investing some uh, for some uh, power for solar power in that route. The plans are not yet frozen. We are looking at it very actively. Thank you, sir. I think that would be important because otherwise you establish whole plant and after that again you will have to go green. So you get into solar, it would be uh, unnecessary. Uh, uh, a power plant, you will have to keep it idle on that one. So that was the question that was there. Every power is uh, not there. Uh, hmm. There's no plant, I mean. So that, hmm. so that in the long run, we ensure that that to be uh, totally solar. Uh, we hope to get there very shortly. Uh, sir, it would be very helpful. Uh, what are the projects which are going to become on by the end of this uh, year? If some kind of uh, information is provided, that would be good. Uh, I know things are happening at a breakneck speed, but as an investor not being uh, aware about what is happening on that one, it would be helpful if you can actually put a slide saying that what is expected to happen by the end of the year and next year, so that we have some estimates what is happening further on that? So, so I have mentioned earlier, this year 24-25, uh, we should have the two DRI plants ready. Hmm. Two DRI that plants. Is point, uh, uh, that is point 0.36 uh, MPA. Point million yeah. ton ready. Wow. Yeah. And uh, we will have the associated power plant ready. Uh -huh. Yeah. And we will have one pellet plant ready and with that one pipeline uh, for that. And uh, the mine should be uh, ready to produce 25 minutes. Okay, sir. And out of this uh, pellet plant, what are we are going to produce? Four million tons, uh, uh, million tons one. Uh, that would also be supporting the DRA plant, sir, or it is going to be completely sold out that friendly? So that's a call that uh, the uh, market, because this first, uh, we'll be producing uh, for the first one and a half years. It will be producing around uh, 800,000, say 650,000 tons of, 650,000 tons of uh, DRI. Uh, we will have the option during this period because we will be selling the product out. So mm -hmm. depending on the market uh, requirement, we can we will be flexible uh, either DRI or uh, pellet. I mean either RNO DRI or uh, pellet based DRI. Okay, so that's going to depend upon that cost economics at that point of time. Is this my understanding, right, sir? Sorry, it depends upon that market pricing. That point of market pricing because at that, that time I am not uh, you know uh, consuming the uh, our own DRI. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Sir. And the second. Then our uh, results, our uh, thought process will be much more crystal clear. Thank you, sir. Uh, the other one that is uh, another question that I have is that previously you were talking about uh, increasing the uh, mining capacity by 20%, that is 10 million to 12 million, uh, because you need very little easy clearance uh, of process for that. I have talked uh, about a year back or so, or around nine months back, I remember. We, we had, uh, we, we, when we went into the detailing of that process, we realized that we, we do save on the public hearing process, but, but uh, the other uh, processes of the approval are very, very same. Mm -hmm. So, decided to go in for the big bang approach rather than a small approach of 20%, 20% and then the beneficiation plan. And also we have, uh, we got very encouraging results from the beneficiation study that we have carried up. We also mm -hmm. uh, produced, uh, not produced, I will set up our pilot plan for the uh, uh, beneficiation in record time. So with all mm -hmm. that effectiveness on the beneficiation, we decided to go the big bang uh, way. Okay. So that means... Uh, this year, mining uh, uh, mining capacity is going to be 10 million. Is what we should be. Oh, uh, 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 that's what. It is. Yeah. Actually, it depends very much on when exactly we get it because after that we have to do it pro data. So let yeah. us see how it works out. Yeah, but uh, anyway, uh, even if you get it by the uh, March, I think it would be extraordinary speed for uh, getting the EC clearance. I would definitely look forward to hearing the positive news on that. 10 million would be the minimum. Anything over and above that would. 
Thank you, sir. Those are my questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was the last question in queue. I would now like to hand the conference back to the management team for closing comments. So thank you everybody for all the very interesting questions and uh, we hope you've been able to be uh, lucid in the answers and uh, our investment relations uh, desk will always be open for any further questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. On behalf of Equinus Securities, that concludes the conference. Thank you for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. You may now disconnect your lines.